السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته مرحبا بكم أيها الطلاب الكرام وأيضا رمضان مبارك And that's something that you should say رمضان مبارك and not رمضان كريم Allah is الكريم and the month of Ramadan is blessed, it's Mubarak. As for the generous one, it is Allah. So, اليوم سنأخذ الدرس الخامس الجزء الثالث. Today we're going to take lesson 5, part 3. As you know, we explained Mudaf and Mudafun ilay. And now what we're going to do, since we've explained all the things that are necessary, we are going to go through the book to try to finish this chapter a little quicker. Open up to page 27 and go to where it says the speech of Ali. All right? Aliun. Hada qalamul mudarrisi. Hada qalamul mudarrisi. This is the mudarris, or I should say the teacher's pen. Where's the mudaf? Where's the mudafun ilay? Qalamu is the mudaf, and al mudaf ilay is al mudarris. How do you know that? The mudarris ends with the majrur state, which is kesra. Next word. Qala Sa'idun. Sa'idun said, the word qala is not there, but that is what's implied. Qala Sa'id. أين حقيبة المدرس؟ ما معنى حقيبة؟ أخبروني. Inform me. ما معنى حقيبة؟ حقيبة means bag. So he's asking, أين حقيبة المدرس؟ ماذا يقول؟ What is he saying? ماذا يقول؟ Where is the teacher's bag? قال علي the next one. Here, tahta, tahta al maktabi. This word tahta we have to take. Tahta is what is known as a dharf. You might think, what what did we just write? This is what we wrote. But you can take this piece and set it on top, which will give you that. And you notice it's like that. It ends in Fetha. It's Mabni on the Fetha. It has to end with there. It's not going to be Tahtu. It's Tahta. Alright? Uh, because it is a Varf. Varf means it is a specific place or a specific time. And whenever you got something that is a specific place or time, it's going to uh, be called a Varf and it will mostly look like this where it ends with a Fetha. You say عِنْدَ You say الْيَوْمَ Anything that is a ظرف is going to end in that fatha. So now you have tahta, and and of course you guys always know there's, there's exceptions. And he's saying here, let me look at it one more time, here tahta al-maktabi and we're just going to write al-maktab whoops, ta'ba al b Whatever comes after a dharf, it's going to be mudaf, and this is going to be mudafun ilay. See, you might think, well, is it a harf jar? No, it's not a harf jar. It's going to make it majroor, not because this is a harf jar. Remember the haruf al jar we took them, it was min, ila, an, ala, fi. Those ones make the words that come after it end with a kasra. There are other words that come. And it it's in itself is not directly affecting it. It's being attributed to being under. Tahta, by the way, means under. And mekta means uh, desk. So this is affecting this bil idafa. It's becoming mudafun ilay, and it's not uh, affecting it that it's a ism majrur. It's not a, a harf jar. So now we have tahta al maktabi. So again. Uh, here, if you guys remember, we took huwa, right? And we said huwa means he or he is. And here is just for feminine, she. Okay? So he said, here tahta al maktabi. Why did he use here? 
she is under the mektab? Let's go back and see what was said before. The sentence before it was, Aina haqibatul mudarrisi. Where is the mudarris? Where is the teacher's bag? What's the word for bag again? Haqi. Haqi. Two dots. Ba. T. So we have the word bag is haqiba. It ends with a ta marbuta. Ta marbuta is one of, I believe it was three, one of three indicators of a feminine word. Words that end with a ta usually means a feminine word. Words that end with a alif maqsura is usually a feminine word. Words that end with alif and hamza usually is a feminine word. Okay? So, um, we're not going to take these today. We're only taking this one. Okay? So now, the bag is not actually a girl. It's not a she. So we learned that hia means she, but it can also be used as it for feminine objects. We learned that he or hua means he, but it also can mean it for masculine objects. How do we know if the thing is masculine or feminine? Simple. If it ends with a tamarbuta, it's, it's feminine. Or if it ends with this, it's feminine. Or if it ends with that, it's feminine. All you have to worry about today is this one. You see a word that ends with tamarbuta, it's either going to be she or is going to be it, feminine object. If it doesn't fall in those categories, it's male. And of course, there are exceptions. Because then you're going to start getting into plurals. Plural inanimate objects. And when you get there, we'll explain what we mean. So, when we say, هِيَ تَحْتَ maktabi. We're saying, it is, meaning the bag, al-haqiba, the bag, or I'm sorry, it is under the desk. All right, very good. Let's go to tamarin. Tamarin are the exercises. Ajib anil as'ilat al-atiya. Right? What does that mean? Ajib. Ma ma'na ajib? Answer. عن الأسئلة الآتية Answer the following questions. أين كتاب محمد؟ Go back and look at the script and see أين كتاب محمد؟ You should answer. If you go back and read, he says هو على المكتب هناك. That's what you should write for these questions. أين كتاب عمار؟ so you go back and look at where is Ammar's book and write the answer in there. Aina Hakibatul Mudarisi. And you go back and look for where the teacher's book is. Turn the page and we take Adif al Kalimat al Ula ila athaniya. Adif. That sounds like mudaf and mudaf un ilay. And it has to do with adding and addition, right? So when he says Adif, he's saying Make one of them mudafun ilay. Add a mudafun, uh, the first word to the second word. You have the word kitabun and muhammadun. And then you say kitabu muhammadin. The next one he says across to the left, maktabun and al mudarris. Oh, I'm sorry, maktabun, yeah. Maktabun and al mudarrisu. So you put them together, maktabul mudarrisi. All right. Here, we have a few words, and you need to take the first word, combine it with the second one. Not combine, but you need to make one belong to the other. The possessed and the possessor. Not possessed as in, you know, they require a exorcism or, a, you know, someone to read Quran on them. Possessed meaning as somebody owns it. So, you take, for example, Qalamun and Hamidun. So, how would you say Hamid's pen. You would say, Qalamu 
Hamidin. And go to the left, next one. Miftahun and Al Baytu. So you're going to say Miftahul Bayti. Now I want you to take a few moments. Go ahead and do this, and then I'm going to go through them quickly, inshallah ta'ala. Or since it's already getting close to our, you know, 12, 13 minute mark. This will be homework for you guys, and then when you guys come back, we will just fly through them, meaning and by merging them or uh, doing the possessed and the possessor. So as always, Allahumma allimna ma yanfa'una, wanfa'na bima allamtana, wazidna ilman. One last thing, it is the month of Ramadan now, so you're going to want to make sure that you don't make your day of fasting and the day you're not fasting equal, meaning... Make use of these times, everything is multiplied. The good is multiplied, the bad is multiplied. It's worse that you, when we say the bad is multiplied, it means it's worse. You still get one sin, but it's worse than doing it outside of Ramadan. So, um, as for the good, it's multiplied as in you get more numbers. So, barakallahu feekum, wassalamu alaikum, wa ila liqaat.